having to take glasses off to put safety glasses on to to cut and then take the safety glasses off put the regular glasses on to read yeah. the measurement take the glasses off put the glass you know and you're doing that 50 times an hour yeah. and you just that's just ridiculous sure so i wanted full range lenses yeah i would yeah. think these are my normal lenses i yeah. literally would i was shocked when i came out of the surgical center and i could see i yeah. was just shocked um, um, hey guys i want to introduce you to one of my patients and this gentleman here is an engineer. He's very detail oriented. And that's why I requested that he shares his feedback, positive and negative, that he's had with his cataract surgery. You found me on YouTube, right? Yes, I found you on YouTube. And tell me what you were thinking when it was time to have cataract surgery. What were you looking for? Um, what kind of lens? I know we talked a little bit about lenses, but I want to hear from you. What kind of, what were you looking for uh, from your cataract surgery and the lens that you were going to select? Well, I just wanted the best outcome I could get. You know, I'm I'm in my 70s, so you, yeah. know, you, you just really want the best. Being a technician, I know that there's trade-offs for everything. And so I feel very fortunate that uh, the technology has improved so much in the last like five years. It's absolutely amazing. And so I went to uh, an ophthalmologist that my wife was going to, and they're the ones that determined that I had cataracts. Um, not such, not really bad, but they were causing glare at night. And, you know, my wife is 80. She doesn't drive much anymore, so I have to do the driving at night. And so when the, uh, the ophthalmologist shined the light in my eyes and said, read it, and I said, what? Read what? <laughs> you know, it's yeah. headlights in the fog. I yeah. can't really read that. So he said, oh, well, then you have cataracts, and, and they're bad enough under things that you do that you qualify to have surgery. Yeah. And, and were you looking to be free from glasses? Yes. I, wanted, I, I looked at it because they, I was given a choice by the other ophthalmologist of... Um, the monofocal, which would be paid for totally by insurance, um, an extended depth of field, like the Vividi, and then his only full range lens was the Panoptics. And so he said, these are your choices, you know, go talk to the office manager and we'll get you all set up. And I said, well, that's great, but let me go home and do some research. And so I found your webs, you on the web, and uh, a couple of others, and they were talking about this new Clarity 3, Clair Clearview 3. Yeah. Um, so I went back to the, the original ophthalmologist and said, well, you know, I've been looking at these, and there's these two more modern lenses that have just been released in the last 12, 18 months, and yeah. I'm interested in those. Yeah. And um, they said, well, I don't do those. I don't know anything about them. None of the ophthalmologists that I know do anything like that. If you want one of these, fine, we'll set it up. If not, go find somebody else. So then I found you, and um, I was so pleased to find you because you are the only one in this area that even comes close to competing with Dr. Shannon Wong in uh, Austin. Yeah. Uh, he has a lot of stuff out yeah. there. And so um, it was both you and he that got me going, okay, maybe this Clearview is probably the best for mine. Yeah. I do a lot of work in the shop. Yeah. Um, so I help people convert vans and various things. And so a lot of my work is on milling machines and lathes and table saws. And it's measure, cut, measure, cut. Oh, I see. Things like that. Yeah, yeah. And so having to take glasses off to put safety glasses on to, to cut and then take the safety glasses off, put the regular glasses on to read yeah. the measurement, take the glasses off, put the glass... You know, and you're doing that 50 times an hour, yeah. and you just, that's just ridiculous. Sure. So I wanted full range lenses. Yeah. They didn't have to be perfect. I yeah. just wanted something where, for sure. normal stuff, I didn't have to wear glasses. Yeah, makes sense. So, um, so Clearview was an option. Clearview was an option. And then another lens we considered was Odyssey. We considered Odyssey based on a video that Shannon Wong did saying that, um, he had a couple of patients that were doing very small print and they found that some of the ghosting that they were getting from the Clearview was causing some problems and that they were willing to put up with the halos at night 
to gain a better reading vision for very small stuff. I think yeah. he was a pharmacist or something, and he had mm -hmm. to read mm -hmm. very small things. You guys see how detailed he is? He's getting exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. So uh, that's when I contacted your office yeah. and said, you know, well, what do you think? And, uh, and he, I, you actually came back and said, well, um, we've had a... We think you'd be probably more pleased with the clear view for what you're doing uh, and that the real close-up work um, seems to be better with the clear view than the Odyssey, even with the minor ghosting. Yeah, yeah. so um, my experience has been that when the clear view works, it works really, really well. And so we decided we were going to do the clear view on the first eye. Right. And then depending on the vision quality with the first eye, we would decide with the second eye if we're going to put a matching clear view or a odyssey. Right. And so how did you feel after the first clear view? Well, I was really annoyed that you wouldn't do both at the same time. You to <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm very happy that, that you did that because yeah. it did a couple of things. Uh, it allowed me to... Uh, compare yeah. the clear view with an eye that doesn't really have a horribly bad cataract in yeah. it. So I really had fully correctable vision with glasses in the left eye and um, it was just that whites were slightly brownish and sure. uh, and there was some glare under bright lights. Um, so I could actually see, okay, well what is the clear view compared to a relatively good eye? Sure. And yes, there's some ghosting, um, and a, a little bit of glare, but not that much. And I was I was actually surprised at how little. Yeah. Um, it does take me time when reading uh, high contrast print to for the eyes to adjust and snap in. It's it's fascinating. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. But based on that, we decided to go with the clear view. I decided to go with the clear view on both eyes. Yeah. So uh, the pros of the first clear view uh, significantly outweighed the negatives, and oh. you felt comfortable if you had this vision in both eyes. Yes, I okay. did. Because I, with this eye, I was able to read the smallest numbers on your number yeah. chart. Yeah. And one of the lines on my number chart says, Doc... It seems like I owe you some freshly baked cookies. <laughs> and and uh, an engineer, when they make a cookie, they make them really good. Look at this. When he brought in his uh, first batch of cookies to the surgery center, they disappeared. They didn't tell me. They ate them all. And then the second time you came in, you told me, hey, did you try the cookies? And I said, what cookies? No one told me. They ate them all. And so when I tried them, they're incredible. I'm like, you can't be, this is not a casual thing for you. You must be spending a lot of time, even the way the cookies are shaped, they're so perfect. And so then I think I ate seven cookies that day. And then, uh, so if I start to get bigger on camera, <laughs> you can blame him, okay? But then you, you shared the recipe, so maybe I'll share the recipe with you guys. Yeah, you're welcome to have the recipe. Uh, these are coconut macadamia nut, and one of the ladies, uh, the pre-op yeah. nurses, asked yeah. for those. So yeah. I took them a batch on oh, Monday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How many cookies do you make a year? Well, I don't make that many now. Probably 20, 30 dozen. Okay. But I used to make hundreds of dozens. Oh, wow. Because my company would have charitable contributions and they yeah. wanted to deduct from my check. And I said, <laughs> no, but I will bake you cookies for the bake sales. Okay. And so I think the biggest year I made 10,000 cookies. Oh, wow. 10 or 12,000 wow. cookies. And they sold them for a dollar each. Got it. Well, they are awesome. These days, the people will sell these for three, four dollars each, you know? They're good. But how did you feel with the clear view after both eyes? Now, one eye has been done for a week. And the other one's been a few weeks, I think. All right? How are you doing so far? Well, I think you cheated and put a slightly better reading lens in one eye and a slightly <laughs> better distance in, uh, lens in the other eye. Um, but it's really fascinating. When I'm looking at black text on white, like on a computer screen, uh -huh. um, and it's normal size text, say 10 point, something like that, when I first look at it at a reading distance, I see the ghosting, and it, and then 
it sort of floats off the page and then snaps in, and there's no ghosting. It's perfect. So you're you're adapting to that basically. So I seem to be yeah. adapting to it. And, yeah. Yeah. And as as I'm turning pages or moving, you know, it'll it'll slightly go out and then it snaps right back in. Got it. It's it's absolutely amazing. I was shocked when the ghosting went away. It just goes yeah. away. Yeah. How about your vision for driving? Uh, I was out at a birthday party Sunday, and we came home at 11 o'clock at night. Um, no halos, a slight bit of ghosting, and I mean very, very slight. I have to look for it. Yeah. Um, some of the cars now have a strip of LEDs down the, yeah, okay. the sides. Yeah. Okay. Like I can just see that there's a slight another strip maybe a half an inch or an yeah. inch over sure. that goes down. That's all I see. Yeah, yeah. And sure. I have to look for it. Sure, sure. I don't notice yeah. it. One thing you'll get a kick out of, um, you know those uh, patio lights that are uh, that are popular now? They're on a thick yeah. cable, yes. and they hang down and have a bulb. Yes. Yeah. And the newer ones are LED, so they have this uh, filament in them. Right, and okay. it's just a long filament. They had that at the birthday party. And so I'm sitting there, and of course I'm doing the lizard thing, testing one eye and the other yeah. eye. Yeah. And I noticed that when I looked at these, there was an angel wing flare at the just very small and it looked like Tinkerbell. <laughs> right in time for the holidays. Exactly. Right so you have this bright light and these two little feathers that came out to yeah. the side. Yeah. It looked just like Tinkerbell. Yeah. But you're, are you comfortable driving at oh, night? Yeah. Better than with my glasses and my other eyesight. Got it. Far better. Okay. And then how about watching TV? Oh, I was watching TV and everything was crystal clear four hours after the operation. <laughs> right. I couldn't Great. believe it. Great. So now I'm going to take a look at the lenses. Uh, I'm going to check to see that they're centered. I'm going to check for PCO or if there's any opacity in the capsule behind the lens implants. Um, but uh, you're doing very, very good so far. Just so you guys know, he's hitting 20-20 in both eyes, but a little easier in the second eye. In the left it? eye, yeah. yes. So typically, whenever I do a procedure, we do one eye at a time, and I look to see how's the vision performance. It, with a multifocal, you're, you're, we're trying to give you good far and good near. Sometimes the far is better than the near, sometimes the near is better than the far. And so for the second eye, uh, based on how the first one's healing, we can make a slight adjustment of our target, sometimes just by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, just a tiny amount, just so that both eyes together work very well and help you see both far and near without glasses. It's amazing. Uh, in looking at the screen for the 2020 the thing, if I, the first eye, it's slightly blurry, and I really have to concentrate to be able yeah. to see the 2020. With the left eye, it's absolutely crystal clear. Yeah. And it's the opposite when I'm reading. Yeah. So if I'm looking at the with yeah. this eye, it's slightly yeah, yeah. blurry, and I may not be able to read this ultra fine print. Sure. With this eye, crystal, crystal clear. Yeah. And when both eyes are working together, I don't even notice. Yeah. I can't tell sure. that one eye is, sure. is taking predominance. But I also sure. know that if I'm reading at just a normal distance, it's crystal clear, the ghosting is gone. If I cover one eye, the ghosting comes back. If I cover the other eye, the ghosting comes back. Got it. But on different sides of the letter. Okay. Un uncover both eyes and it snaps in crystal clear, ghosting gone. Amazing. Well, let's take a look at them. This is the right eye. Looks nice and clear, no significant PCO. Magnify a little bit. Let me see if I can get the angle to show you. That's fine. See, when we look at it, unlike a multifocal, it basically looks like a monofocal. Tell you just the lighting a little bit, and you can see a difference between the two wedges. But even then, it's hard to see. So that's why you get good quality vision. But it's a refractive multifocal, so which is why you notice some ghosting around high contrast things. But yeah, it looks great. Let me check the other side. And right here, perfect, look towards me. Yeah, right there is good, okay. So there's a the little wedge, you see it there? This lighting here, looks perfect. 
Awesome. Well, both eyes look fantastic. Let's see if I can see the wedges in the other one. And with the bright light, your pupil's coming down, of course, but there it is. Beautiful. My friend, I'm very happy you're doing well. Had you not told me that you had put in plastic lenses or whatever, <laughs> I wouldn't know. I would yeah. think these are my normal lenses. Yeah. I literally would. I was shocked when I came out of the surgical center and I could see. I yeah. was just shocked. So I hope uh, his feedback was very helpful to you. Definitely any multifocal, you have to go over the pros and cons of it with your patients. Uh, but even a clear view or, or a, another multifocal, you can successfully give it to an engineer. There's always this uh, fear that maybe the engineers are too nitpicky, they're not going to be happy with what you give them, but I think, at least in my experience, as long as you cover in detail the pros and cons of the lens, the vision to expect with the lens prior to doing surgery, then engineers are super smart and they uh, understand it. and so. I appreciate you sharing your feedback. No, you're welcome. Cool. And uh, guys, I'll share the recipe for these. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you. Bye-bye, guys.